Should we try that again? Hi, everybody. How are we doing today? Woo! There you go. Woo! Thanks for joining us today. My name is Sean Foster, and I'm going to be emceeing the lightning talks. I was told that I was going to do this two minutes ago, so <laughs> bear with me here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this will be fun today. We've got some good topics here. Um, we're going to have about five minutes per speaker, and we're going to have a timer here, so we're going to keep things moving along here. Um, so I'll pass it over to Miguel, and he's going to talk about the OEE project update. So here's Miguel. All right. Thank you. Um, so hi, everyone. My name is Miguel, and I'm the, I'm the project lead for OAE. Uh, OAE, in case you don't know, is a um, collaboration platform built for academia, and it stands for Open Academic Environment. So I'm going to talk to you about what we've, what we've been up to this last year. So um, it all started with this set event uh, that triggered the rest, which was the Unity, um, which was the commercial instance of OAE, was discontinued, and the, the the company that led Unity uh, pulled out of the consortium. And unfortunately, we had like to suspend the roadmap and focus on other stuff. As you can see in this uh, GitHub chart, uh, there was a bit of a break there. Uh, but in, you know, since then, we've been able to resume work. And uh, this is what I feel, what is, this is what the, the commit chart looks like now. Uh, so we had a break there, and then uh, four different releases uh, ever since, which is you know, good. Um, so we took this opportunity to focus on different uh, tasks other than development. The first one would be um, technical, reducing technical debts and uh, adopting best practices. And well, in case you're not familiar with the concept technical debt, I Google that for you. And this is the, the image that I got. Uh, and it's perfectly, it's actually very accurate from an engineering standpoint. Uh, what it feels like is you want to move fast, but you don't have, you know, proper wheels. So basically, uh, you know, you don't have the tools that allow you to do what you want. Uh, so instead of working, you have to work towards working, right? Um, on another perspective, this is what it feels like to have a project with technical debt. It feels like you don't have the proper foundation to build upon. So everything you do, it's gonna only going to make things worse, and it's going to be fragile. And obviously, there's another um, advantage, which is the project itself it, it makes it, when you do reduce technical debt, it makes it look good. So you, if you're looking to attract talent, if you're looking to attract third-party developers to work with you, it's important. So another task uh, was continuous de deployment. So we had this issue. Uh, our deployments took, um, you know, way too long. Uh, it took way too much effort. Uh, we usually took like a day to to do a full deploy. Um, and since we had this uh, discontinuation of Unity, we had to basically redesign the whole mechanism. And this is what it feels like. Uh, at first, you know that you have components and servers, and you have to pull everything together. You have to uh, make every component speak to one another. But then, when you get down to it, you realize it's not like baby Legos. It's more like adult Legos, right? So because you need to configure stuff, you need to make sure that everything is actually connected, everything actually works. and then. There's the third process, which is to actually make the things work because your users depend on it. So you know it's uh, very hard work, but it's also very re rewarding because in the end your users will use what what, what you did. Um, we also focused uh, on new features, and I'll be uh, going um, through those features tomorrow um, on, a, on a presentation alongside with Isap. But I'm I'm gonna give you a sneak peek, perhaps uh, what is the best feature of all, which is collaborative spreadsheets. So OAE already integrated with Etherpath. Um, for those of you who don't know Etherpath, it's like a Google Doc uh, word processing experience. And uh, there's another project called Ethercalc. Uh, and we recently integrated Ethercalc as well. So it allows users to have um, you know, to work collaboratively, you know, with real-time feedback, uh, but on spreadsheet instead of word processing. And finally, uh, we also have been working on a new design, but I'll be talking about that in the next presentation. So thank you. Thanks so much, Miguel. So up next, the next session is OEE Reimagined, and it is with Miguel. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome back. Long time no see you. Hi. So it's still me. 
Um, so I'm going to give you a sneak peek of uh, the new design screens with a few animations. Um, let's start with the login. So this is the previous previously uh, uh, designed login screen. You might be familiar with it. Uh, and this is the new one. So uh, it's a small animation. The functionality is basically the same, but it obviously looks different. And uh, we've tried to follow a whole set of new modern guidelines based on, uh, well, loosely based on the material guidelines. Um, you're also able to search uh, without being logged in, in a way. So this is what it looks like, the search results. Dashboard. So this is what the old, the old dashboard looks like. It basically has a recent um, an activity feed, and this is what the modern one lo looks like. Way more attractive, if you if you ask me. Uh, but you also have uh, a lot of different features, like a dark mode. Uh, you have more efficiency and a higher degree of visibility in general. So. The library, uh, this is what it looks like right now. Uh, you have folders and files, some previews, but we've redesigned it as well. Uh, instead of folder, folders, we're having uh, like labels on the side, uh, and this is what the preview of a PDF looks like, and this is the uh, authoring screen uh, using Etherpad. Groups, uh, so yeah, another screen, and this is what it looks like now. OAE basically has the same structure uh, for different perspectives, uh, be it a group perspective or a personal perspective. So this is, this is the, the discussions, which is um, just like a thread of comments. And we've redesigned it so that uh, you can see the thread like this and uh, you know, pave the way to other features based on threading, um, like Reddit does it, for instance, or Slashdot. And finally, the site itself, uh, it has been designed with Unity uh, in mind uh, a few years ago, but now we're redesign redesigning it so that it has more uh, of a clean uh, look, and it also has the proper links to um, GitHub and uh, social media. The animation is an extra. It doesn't exist in reality. Just <laughs> All right, so that's it. Thank you. Thanks so much, Miguel. Uh, next up is the case for Open Aquella. Chris, is Chris here? Testing. All right. My name is Chris Beach. I'm uh, the Unicon Open Aquila Tech Lead, and I wanted to discuss a little bit today on why you might want a content hub in your educational ecosystem. Okay. So, content today is all around us, right? And we all have to figure out how to manage that. Uh, your portals, your LMSs, Dropbox, on your file system. We've got to figure out what to do with it. Okay. At the heart of everything we do should be the learner, right? It should be the students gaining knowledge. So we need to figure out how to take this content and be able to deliver it and make it available such that the student can really start to learn. Okay. In order to do that, we have content. We need to figure out how to manage it. All right. So view content management system as the concept. Okay. We have all this content, and everyone agrees 
hopefully, that we need some way to manage it, um, but it's hard to agree on exactly what to use. All right? There's a lot of different ways to, to figure that out. Right? Uh, a lot of different kind of content, a lot of different delivery methods. I mean, we need to come to some sort of a, uh, an agreement in an institution in order to make that a reality and actually get the content to our learners. Okay. So why am I here? Well, a couple years ago, Pearson open sourced Aquella. It became open Aquella, and now we have a viable open source solution that allows us to store anything and then deliver it anywhere. Okay. So let's take a step back, and what do we really want in a content hub? What is important to us? We want less restrictions. We, want it to tell it, we don't want the system to tell us what we have to do with the content. We want to be able to tell the system, you know, this is where it should go. We want to be able to reuse our content. Content is really interesting to create. It's fun. You put it into a system, and if you can't reuse it, there was really no point in what you did. So you want to be able to allow people to reuse it, remix it, um, and be able to, uh, to share it out. You want to curate content. Not every piece of content is created equally, and you don't want your users to then have to experience poor content uh, because you put a piece of content in there and it was immediately available to your entire student body. Integrations, you don't. Um, not one system is going to do everything really, really well. So allow your content hub to store, manage your content really well, and then integrate out with presentation layers and authoring layers to do what they do really well. Okay? Federate external content. It's, it's no secret that you can't create one content hub that's going to keep all content that you would possibly want in your institution. So you need to be able to have ways to bring in external content and show it to the user so they think they're really just using one, um, one search engine. You want to be able to customize it because really, you can't get alignment inside of a group of four people, much less an institution at times, to say, how do you want to bring, to take your content and author it, or to edit it, or to bring it out and display it to your users. And then APIs, because we don't know what the future is going to hold. So we want to be able to be able to access this content in a clean, um, you know, res less restricted way um, that's a little more future proof. And so this is where Open Aquella can come in. Open Aquella already has standard integrations with uh, various authentication schemes. It can do that metadata search um, for other repositories, other pieces of content, or other, other content repositories. It can associate inside of its own, inside of an Aquella item, it can associate different attachments. Uh, which is really just links that have wraps for authentication, so it looks like you're accessing Flickr inside of Open Aquella. Right? And then your presentation layers. Right? It has standard LMS integrations. I really hope to see in the future that we can get Sakai up there again. Um, U Portal for presentation. Right? So we've got LMS, we've got portals, and there can be more. Um, and that's really it. I wanted to focus on it's out there, right? Let's see what we can do with it. Uh, let's let Open Aquila do what it does best, and then each of the other Open Appar or the other Aperio projects, let them do what they do best and integrate them together. Thank you. Thanks so much, Chris. Uh, next up, we have Mad Science Live from Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Is this thing on? It's a really big screen down there. OK, so I have prepared nothing, absolutely nothing. All of this will be ad hoc, because they always are, and shouting makes things better. So what we are going to do today, class, is build 
an online, highly accessible course website. I'm not doing the Aperio website, don't care about it anymore, but um, gonna do it in the time after I'm just rambling about what it is I'm supposedly going to do. So what you should do is go to hacktheweb.org and see why I think all the communities in Aperio should get together in a room and have a boff around sharing and stealing from my 340 plus web components that are not tied to any platform. Okay, let's go. This is a previously unannounced before this minute uh, web application. This is a SaaS version that I'm building for Penn State of a platform called HackCMS. HackCMS builds completely static websites that are entirely web component driven. Uh, what's the course topic? Dr. Chuck is old. There we go. Okay. So this is the Dr. Chuck is old course. It's going to be about old things. So we're going to fire up a Dr. Chuck is old course. I'm going to search for Dr. Chuck is old. Sweet. And now we're going to begin class. So for today's lecture, we need to outline content. Notice that that is also a web component. This entire thing. Dr. Chuck thinks that a node modules directory equals equals node. That's a joke for, for developers. So what that did is it created pages. Imagine your faculty are able to create pages in a content outline. Maybe you use like a learning management system of some kind and they're terrible at content. Well, they don't have to be anymore because all of these are web components. Even the editing experience of this is a web component. Let's say I want to cite work because this is really important, this work that I'm doing. Um, I'd like to do a share-alike attribution about Dr. Chuck that I can make a web component, edit it, put it in the page, hit save, and that is now in what I can, am calling a forever format. That is a citation hyphen element. So you're going to have your faculty go and do training about how to write CSS and HTML in order to cite things appropriately and accessibly, or they, they, they could put that there and have a tag that just does it, right? Um, speaking of technical debt, um, let's search Wikipedia uh, for CK Editor. CK Editor. Okay, good. Well, well, let's write an article about CK Editor because CK Editor is technical debt, everyone, as we know. And so technical debt is bad, and what we should use instead is hacks. No, it could be anything. But all of these components, all these interactions are not coupled to any platform. Yes, the data gets stored somewhere, right? I'm not going to claim that that just magically happens. But any platform in Aperio can steal any piece of this. That could be that modal interaction, it could be that button, it could be my face. It doesn't matter what it is, it can be literally anything. Maybe I want to edit my face, I do want to edit my face, that'd be fantastic. But um, maybe I want to transform my face, that's even better, it sounds, sounds so much more nuanced. Uh, to me, me, because lol. <laughs> that's not a good picture for it, I should do like this instead. There we go, like sideways, right? So. I can put that in, save. Ah, oh, gosh, there's overlap, that's terrible. All right, edit this, configure layout. Let's make it two columns instead, right? Because you're gonna keep paying people on staff to do that one interaction, right? I do web development and I hate making it responsive. It's the same operation every time and yet it doesn't really need to be. So let's all get together in a room and embrace the fact that none of us want to make buttons anymore and none of us want to make flyouts and modals and hell we don't even want to make things accessible we just want them to be accessible and so please talk to me about breaking apart bits of this platform so that you can even just get this video player which is a single web component made up of at least 50 web components that allow you to have searchable transcripts. You probably want searchable transcripts in your system, right? It's really good for accessibility. This just does that. So please stop reinventing the wheel. Please help us make this better. And then we can make all Aperio projects better. Yay! Nice, thank you so much, Brian. Next up, we have the Student Sakai Orientation video from NYU.
And when she's setting up, um, if there's, uh, we have a spot for one more. If anybody else has some uh, idea for a lightning talk that's just come to them while they're sitting here and seeing all these other inspirational presentations today, uh, if you want to, let me know. Uh, I'll give you the time for during this talk to, to think about that. So uh, I'll turn it over. I'm adapter health because I'm oh, uh, very much not a technical person when it comes to hardware. I brought two that are probably incompatible, you know, but. Thank you. And while they're getting that hooked up, I want to remind you that we're going to have the showcase reception afterwards. And it, it, I believe it's in the main area. So that's right outside the door. And that's from 5 to 6, if I remember correctly. Yep. 5 to 6. Cool. Hope you can join us there. I should have brought more material, but I was told two minutes before the starter that I was going to be the MC. So this is. <laughs> And uh, just a reminder that there's the dine around tonight, so if you haven't signed up, you can find the link. It's on the conference website, and I believe it's on the app as well. And um, there's a Google Doc there. You can find which place you want to go to, find some other people to go with to different restaurants. So check that out. That's where we're going to be dining. Um, and there's also a couple social events going on tonight. So there's the tower, the sky tower thing, and I forget what the second one is. Pardon? Movies. Movies tonight. Cool. It looks like we got something on the screen, so that's good. <laughs> and I'll turn it over to you. Thank you so much for filling us. Awkward yeah. silence. And sorry, I didn't get your name. Um, I'm Clea Mahoney from Clea. MIUIT. Clea. Here's Clea. So this is my first Aperio conference, and I hope everyone is enjoying it just as much as I am. Um, it's been wonderful so far, especially being out in L.A. Um, and so this morning, I attended a session on Sakai and general LMS uh, user surveys provided by the folks of uh, Illinois and Notre Dame. Um, and there's a really interesting discussion on student satisfaction specifically being tied to instructors' use of the system, right? You know, students might hate Sakai. Maybe that's because their faculty don't know how to use it. Maybe some students love it, and that's because you really have an innovative faculty member who's making the most out of the system. So now I'd like to share one of our first student-created videos. Uh, it's intended kind of as a lightning-fast orientation for students joining NYU, but I think it will be equally powerful as a motivator for faculty in using some of these technologies available through their course sites. NYU classes, the student's experience. NYU classes is the platform I use for my day-to-day -day activities related to my coursework. Upon logging in, I'm brought to the home page where I have a number of courses spread along the horizontal bar on the top. If I want to go to a specific course site, I can click on one of these courses or visit my sites on the top right corner to access all of my courses organized by the semester. On the far right, I'm able to check my calendar and announcements to see if there are any important deadlines or messages. Let's take a peek at one of my courses. On the far left, I have various tools that I have access to in order to navigate through the course site. On the Syllabus tab, I'm able to get a general overview of the course and what to expect throughout the semester. What did we do in class yesterday again? Why don't I head over to the Lessons tab and this week's session to review yesterday's content. We observed a series of paintings and I see that we have homework due by the end of the week. When it's time to submit my homework, I can head over to the Assignments tab, select the respective assignment, and submit it from there. Some of the courses might use the Resources tab in addition to, or instead of, lessons. I see that my professor created a readings folder within Resources to make it easier for me to find what I need. To participate in class discussion online, I can head over to the Forums tab. Here, I can attach videos, images or links to my post to discuss various topics with my classmates or my instructor. By clicking on gradebook, I can check each submitted assignment's grade as well as my overall grade at this point of the semester. My instructor also left me a comment on one of my assignments and I can see it here. If I want to contact my classmates or professor about a project, I can compose a message and send to the respective recipients without having to leave NYU classes. 
when I'm finished, I simply hit send. That's all I need to do for now, but if I get stuck in the future, I know that I can always click Help for this tool in NYU Classes to access step-by-step -step guides for each feature within the platform. All right. <laughs> So I hope you all enjoyed that. I'm so proud of the student workers who created that video, and there's many more to come. Um, for more on this topic, please attend my uh, session tomorrow at 2.45, where I'll be talking about faculty training on Sakai and other educational technologies through the lens of adult learning and including the student perspective, because I know so many of us do training that no one shows up to, and I promise you I found a solution that at least works for us, huge university, NYU. Thank you. Thanks so much, Clea. Uh, I think we have time for one more, as I said at the beginning. If, oh, we got one. Trisha. And Trisha, and what's your topic? Uh, I'm just going to plug our session on Wednesday. Okay, cool. So I have absolutely nothing prepared, just like Brian, but I'm not going to shout. Um, so on. <laughs> On Wednesday at 11.15, that's the last session time slot, uh, we're going to be presenting on the Site Builder Project at the University of Virginia. And I just wanted to invite folks to come and see what we're about to release in our own environment at UVA, and then we'll be contributing back to the community. So very exciting stuff, and I hope you can make it. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Trisha. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else want to, something to sh want to show something? Going once? Going twice? OK. Well, we'll end a little bit early here, but if we can just have one more round of applause to everybody that presented today. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for coming today. Uh, there will be another lightning talks, I believe, tomorrow at the end of the day, tomorrow. So. Yeah. Um, so if you think of something, you can still sign up in the, in the main one. Oh, Trisha wants me to plug the escape room again. So uh, we have a Sakai escape room. It is Sakai themed to talk about different uh, groups that are involved in Sakai, but it's open to everybody. You don't need to be a Sakai person. Uh, it, uh, it's open to everybody. You can sign up at the main desk. That'll be happening uh, all day tomorrow. Um, in the room just to pass the registration desk. So if you sign up at the desk, there's limited spaces. But um, so we've got the showcase tonight. We've got the dine around. Go sign up for some dine around stuff. And uh, hope to see everyone in the showcase in the main area in, at 5 o'clock. Thanks, everybody.